There is mean things happening in this land. There is mean things happening in this land. But the union's going on, and the union's growing strong. There is mean things happening in this land. On the 18th day of May, the union called a strike. But the planters and the bosses throw the people out of their shack. There is mean things happening in this land. There is mean things happening in this land. But the union's going on, and the union's growing strong. There is mean things happening in this land. The planters throw the people off the land where many years they had spent. And in the cold, hot winter, they had to live in tents. There is mean things happening in this land. There is mean things happening in this land. But the union's going on, and the union's growing strong. There is mean things happening in this land. The planters throw the people out without a bite to eat. They curse them and keep them, and some with axe out be. There is mean things happening in this land. There is mean things happening in this land. But the union's going on, and the union's growing strong. There is mean things happening in this land. The people got tired of working, and that from sun to sun. But the planners forced them to work at the point of the gun. There is mean things happening in this land. There is mean things happening in this land. But the union's going on, and the union's growing strong. There is mean things happening in this land. The year is 1934. It is the middle of the Great Depression. The current president, Franklin D. Roosevelt, is coming out with programs to try and stop the Great Depression. In the agricultural industry, there is a much higher supply than there is a demand. To try and fix this problem, the president pays landowners subsidies in exchange for not growing crops on their land. This is an attempt to decrease the supply in order to increase the demand so that farmers can sell their crops for higher prices to help the economy get back on track. However, upon receiving this money, instead of giving the money to the tenant farmers and sharecroppers like they were supposed to, the landowners kept the money for themselves and stopped paying the tenant farmers and sharecroppers and kicked them off their land. This hurt tenant farmers and sharecroppers, leaving thousands of them homeless with no source of income and nowhere to go. During all of this, in a small town called Tyrone's, Arkansas, a socialist named H.O. Mitchell and his partner, Clay East, began the Southern Tenant Farmers Union. This union's purpose was to aid the farmers and fight for their right to receive their portion of subsidies and still have work. The union was met with opposition, and landowners came together to form a mob, killing many union members in the process. But the union held strong. The first strike of the Southern Tenant Farmers Union was in 1935. Cotton pickers were demanding a better pay rate. Under H.L. Mitchell's direction, instead of taking the normal 40 cents, they demanded $1 per 100 pounds of cotton picked. After a few days of the strike, many cotton plantations offered 75 cents and some even gave in to the full $1, making the union's first victory. From there, it was quickly spread all across the South and Midwest, moving its headquarters from Tyronza, Arkansas, where it began, to Memphis, Tennessee. During World War II, the Union urged its members to move to the northern and eastern regions of the United States and find work other than that on cotton plantations. The leadership of the Southern Tenant Farmers Union decided to make the Union a collective bargaining organization like those in the big cities. However, it never quite reached this status due to the continued use of violence and intimidation by plantation owners against the leaders and its members. 
the union eventually evolved into the National Farm Labor Union, and its effects are still felt to this day. While the union didn't completely succeed in its mission, World War II helped solve the problems the tenant farmers and sharecroppers were facing. However, one of the union's biggest contributions wasn't completely intentional. The union was completely interracial and promoted gender equality. Both African Americans and Caucasians, men and women, held leadership roles and were active members in the union. H.O. Mitchell, a socialist, believed that farmers were farmers and everyone facing this issue deserved an equal chance at earning a living. During this period, in the Deep South, the white union members would form a ring around the black union members to protect them from being shot or stabbed. They changed meeting locations constantly, and during every union meeting, the leaders would assign randomized seats for its members in the event that the mob found them. They couldn't kill African Americans without also killing Caucasians. The Southern Tenant Farmers Union breaks barriers in history in two main ways. The first is that the union was integrated and treated African Americans and Caucasians equally. This was over 15 years before the start of the Civil Rights Movement. Equal rights between races were unheard of at the time. After the Southern Tenant Farmers Union demonstrated for the nation how blacks and whites could work together as one, other unions and organizations followed suit and eventually led to a format that the Civil Rights Movement would use. The second main way is that the union promoted gender equality. While women already had the right to vote, they still weren't able to easily attain jobs or land. But in the Southern Tenant Farmers Union, they could not only hold memberships, but also hold leadership roles. While the Southern Tenant Farmers Union didn't fully accomplish their prime mission at the time, their method for operating their union helped set a foundation for equality in our nation. We're going to roll, we're going to roll the union on. We're going to roll, we're going to roll, we're going to roll the union on. If the planner's in the way, we're going to roll it over him, going to roll it over him, going to roll it over him. If the planner's in the way, we're going to roll it over him, going to roll the union on.